Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, today we're coming to you uh, on Facebook Live at 12. Um, it'll be done this way uh, in the future, too, instead of three. I uh, had to do some changes. I had some problems getting it posted right on the event uh, announcement. I apologize for that. I've uh, been working a lot and extremely tired. So, um, so just keep praying about that. But God is good. He's answering prayers. And I couldn't be more blessed. And um, I got prayer going out to everyone. Um, I just want to pray for a special friend and neighbor who's going through a hard time. We pray for, Lord, we just pray for a touch, Lord, of healing spiritually, mentally, and physically, Lord. And we just praise you and we thank you. We give you all the glory, Lord. I pray for peace upon my friend, Lord. Joy. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you. And it's an honor to be in your presence, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you just put me aside and that your words come through this message today, Lord. And I just lift all those that are listening, Lord, up to you. And I just ask for a special touch for my neighbor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, all um, All right. Uh, we'll get two articles today. Uh, the first one's going to be facing earthly struggles. <clears throat> and, uh, it seems like a daily struggle every day these days, especially in this world. Um, but facing earthly struggles is by Lynette Kettle. And in Ephesians 6.12 is what she's basing her scripture on. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, Satan just out to seek to destroy. Um, and his biggest thing is to keep us out of the word. You know, anything to discourage us. Um, to keep from having that relationship with God. And there's nothing more than what God wants is for you to keep that relationship with him through the good times and the bad, because he's always there. He always loves you and he's always going to get you through whatever you may be going through. <clears throat> All right. She writes, it says, growing up, my junior high best friend, Peggy, loved professional wrestling. <clears throat> It was an unknown world to my sheltered pastor's kid background. Little did I know when she invited me to watch it with her, I would be taken on an emotional roller coaster as she cheered, cried, threw herself on the floor, beat the tabletop, and shouted throughout the match. Oh, the drama. To her, it was all so real, while I watched her and the matches in disbelief. Although I've heard it mostly staged for entertainment and wrestlers are putting on a show, to fans like Peggy, it's a real battle being fought between good and evil. Mr. Goody Two Shoes pitted against his evil nemesis. Looking at about beyond appearances, it says, like many fans may be unaware of what's really happening in pro wrestling events. Often, real life situations can be deceiving to those looking merely at the outward appearances and actions. It can seem and feel like individuals and groups coming against us are our personal enemies. However, scripture reminds us that there is more to what's really occurring beyond what we see, hear, feel, and experience. Although opposition may look and feel personal in reality, they are all really opposing God and those who represent him on earth. Most of our earthly components are unaware of how they are actually being played by the devil and his courts to go after us. Although it's easy to seem like our opposition just hates us, it's much deep, deeper than most of us, and even many of them and even many of them understand. There are spiritual forces behind their feelings and actions causing them to believe they are expressing their own thoughts and feelings when in truth they are being influenced by evil spiritual forces that hate God. 
<clears throat> like 2 Corinthians 4, 4 describes, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Beyond their own comprehension, unbelievers are being used to war with God, with many being completely unaware of who is leading them in their thinking and actions. So how do we successfully face stress? Uh, excuse me. Let me get a drink of water. So how do we successfully face struggles? Often as believers can lose sight of who is fighting us too, causing us to start trying to wrestle on a human level. But God has called us to a higher form of defense on a spiritual level because that's where the real scuffle is taking place. So how do we face struggles on spiritual levels from our human standpoint? First, number one, prayer. Prayer is our first point of defense. James 5.16 explains, how the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Spending time in prayer is number one defense against the attacks of our spiritual enemies as well. First Chronicles 5.20 describes how when some of the tribes of Israel, Israel were in combat with their enemies, God heard their cries during the battle and answered their prayers for help because they trusted him. Number two, <clears throat> praise defeats. Praise defeats the enemy. I'm going to say that again. Praise defeats the enemy. Second Chronicles 20, 21, 22 describes a battle scene where King Josephat sent men ahead of his army to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they begin to sing and praise the Lord, God caused the enemy to begin fighting amongst themselves rather than attacking his enemy. Praise is a powerful line of defense in the life of every believer. Like Exodus 15, 2 describes, The Lord is my strength, my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Spiritual weapon, weapons when the battle win the battles. As Christians, what happens in spiritually spiritual directly affects the outcome of the struggle in the physical. Protection from the enemy's attacks comes when we trust God and turn to Him for help. Like Isaiah fifty four seventeen assures, no weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their benediction from me, declares the Lord. By putting into practice God's spiritual ways of dealing with the enemy through speaking words that come from our heart to the heart of God through prayer and praise, we will see him move on our behalf. <clears throat> So set some time aside to look at the struggles you've been facing. Examine ways you can address them using the spiritual weapons God has provided. Okay. Now we're going to go to Article 2. And y'all have to bring me. I am parched today. All right. It says, A prayer to be real. And this is by Maggie Meadows Cooper. She says, I can't seem to shake a conversation I recently had with a dear friend. We were talking about some struggles in her life and she explained, I just wish everyone would get real. I feel so isolated, like I'm the only one going through things. When it, it's time for prayer requests, people talk about their sick family members, but I would love to hear someone say for once, that they need prayer for their marriage or a real personal struggle. She went on, you know, the old saying, go to the throne and not to the phone. Well, I know I need to take it to the Lord, but I also need to hear my friends talk about what's really going on in their lives. So I don't feel so alone. Wow. The truth is that my friend is not alone. We all have struggles. But why is it that we keep them to ourselves? Why do we feel the need to carry on a 
fasted in front of people instead of sharing our hearts, even those closest to us. I can't help but feel like people want truth, but I have found that the truth they want to hear is the truth that is comfortable and non-controversial and easy to digest. A nicer version of the truth, if you will. But the problem is, that's not the real thing. The real thing, the real truth, is uncomfortable and controversial and hard to digest many times. It sometimes breaks your heart. It takes you completely out of your comfort zone. It goes under the surface and reveals those things that can be embarrassing and hard to admit. But so many times, those hard places are where the Lord shows us who He really is. I want to be a friend who can share what is really going on in my life. I want to be able to share my heartaches, disappointments, and fears, and feel completely free in doing so. I want to be a friend who can listen without interrupting to those I love when they share their heartaches and disappointments and fears and have them feel completely safe in doing so because they can trust that I will not share what I've heard. I desperately want to be real. So how do we move past a picture-perfect social media world and polite smiles and how are you, oh, I'm doing great, to just being real? Well, there is no one, no perfect answer. I think a good place to start is taking a good look at who really, who I really am in the Lord. In Joel 2, 12, 13, Joel shares this message from the Lord. Turn to me now while there is still time. Give me your hearts. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. I can just hear the urgency and frustration in his voice. He doesn't want to show, he doesn't want a show for others to see. He wants our broken hearts. He wants us to take everything we have, our hopes and dreams and fears, our disappointments and hurts, and every bad thing we've ever done, all of those things stored up in our hearts and give them to him. When we do that, when we really surrender all to him and lay it all there, we can face the reality of who we are. When we understand that the Lord wants us and accepts us and loves us with all of our mess, it's not quite as scary to share with others. Rejection from people is not as daunting because we know we are accepted and loved by the one who matters most. It also leaves us free to listen to our friends with judgment-free, humble hearts because we know that we are all the same, sinners who need a Savior in a broken world that just stinks sometimes. We are freer to be the body of Christ and not just people who go to church together. My earnest prayer is that we would all find that friend to be that friend who can just be real. That we can say, I don't have it all together. I need prayer. I need a shoulder to cry on. And that friend will do the same in return. But most importantly, don't ever forget that Jesus is our ultimate friend. He came to earth to walk among us and feel what we feel. He gets it. He has been there. He is always available. And he is the only one who will never let us down. Search for the Lord and for his strength, continually seek him. First Chronicles sixteen eleven. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I so desperately want to be a friend who can be real. Help me to have courage in sharing my struggles with others that they might encourage me and love me through them. Help me to be available for my friends to listen when they need me. And more than anything, Lord, help me to surrender wholeheartedly to you and seek you always in your mighty name. Amen. So just be real, folks. Yes, you can't get caught up in gossip. You can't get spread in the word or whatever. But be a true friend to each other. Come together and share in Christ, in his love. And again, prayers go out to all who needs healing. Mentally, physically, spiritually, Lord. We give it all to you. I thank you for listening and joining me today on this special weekend and honoring God this Easter week. So happy Easter and y'all have a very, very good weekend. Be blessed. Bye.